real simple. Somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna lose. But never leave it in a judge's hands. And this is the fight life. Leading up to the fight, Seth was, you know, he was talking, running his mouth, saying stuff, but that didn't affect me at all because my goal at hand was to get the victory. And uh, I, wouldn't let that, I didn't let that phase me because Seth Petrozelli is about gamesmanship and about selling the fight. And that's how I took it, you know what I'm saying? Seth is a respectable man. When I saw him, he acknowledged me, we shook hands, but it's fight time, so it's business. So he did what he had to do, I did what I had to do, and then uh, I got the knockout. I hit him once, got up, walked away, that was it. I felt that punch land and I saw him go limp. You know, I seen where I was throwing the punch, I seen it land, you know, so I figured that there's no more, he need no more damage. He shouldn't take no more punches. I just got up and lifted at that. Now some guys will throw punches, they have their eyes closed, they're not looking away, looking at where they're punching. And when they land, they're surprised. So then they're like, oh, and they throw more punches because they don't realize what just happened because they're not paying attention or they're not really looking and they just threw a punch and landed. But me, I know and I aim where I throw my punches at, so I know what's up. I really didn't think much about his victory of Babalu, because I know Babalu, you know, looked a little undersized. Um, and that's my boy. Bob was a good fighter, but you know, his time was up and uh, you know I I didn't take it I didn't take it as much. I saw a lot of holes in Jacob Noe's game and I'm gonna leave it at that. You know, I really don't like him that much because I feel like he's fake, but you know, I'm just gonna deal with him July 31st. With the Babu fight, you know, I kind of stuck with the game plan. You know, I, I, me and John, we drilled what we needed to do. And uh, John told me, he said, hey, you know, stick with the game plan. You don't have to rush anything. Don't go just straight at him because he'll pull something out of the hat, you know? He said, uh, you let it come to you, it'll be there, you know? So, you know, it went three rounds. I felt like a lot of people felt like, why didn't you win it in the first? Is because I wanted to be safe and sorry, you know? And that was number one priority. Uh, keep it in the middle of the cage. Um, don't even play on the ground or up against the fence with the guy. So, you know, I, I did that and, and sure enough, I walked away with the victory. After the Babalu fight, a lot of people were coming to me, great job, you know, it's a great win for you. And it didn't, it didn't sink in my head, you know. Uh, I don't feel like the job's done. You know, I, I, I felt like I was expected to win that fight. You know, I knew I was better than the guy. I knew he was on his way out. Um, I didn't pat myself on the back too much because, you know, surely right after it, you know, the stuff that was, you know, being commented and stuff, it took my mind off what happened and what, and into what I need to do. So, you know, after the tournament's over with, then I'll congratulate myself on what happened and what I did. But right now, you know, I'm, I'm still in the grind and I hadn't stopped. So, you know, uh, it's just another day, another fight. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to fighting against Mo. So. I was really never a member of Syndicate. I just went there on sparring days, Saturday to go train. And uh, one Saturday I, have to, I happened to walk up in there, and this is a week before my fight with uh, Petrozelli. And uh, <clears throat> you know, I see Jacob know they're stretching. I'm like, okay, I think nothing of it, because I'm there to do what I gotta do. I'm not there to watch other guys. 
He's fighting Babu, I'm fighting Seth. I'm not worried about what he's doing. Ain't no secrets in MMA. Ain't no secrets in combat. Ain't no secrets, period. You know what I'm saying? We all have the same technique. Good technique or bad technique. That's how I see it. And uh, the owner of Syndicate came up to me and was like, look, Mo, we have a situation. You know, uh, um, you know Jacob knows here to train. And uh, you know, I know you like to train here too and use a cage. So, you know, maybe, maybe we have to change the times around where you come before or after he comes. And I was like, cool, no problem. You know, I train with my guys when I come. And so we left it at that. I trained. After training, you know, John Wood comes to me. He's like, hey, homie. Hey, dude. You know, my homeboy, Jacob No, joined the gym, and you can't train here anymore. So I was like, all right. Well, I know he's not the owner, but I didn't want to go back to the owner and be like, hey, you know, someone told me, else, told me, someone else told me I have to leave. So I just left. I was like, cool. I'll just go somewhere else. And, you know, ain't no secrets in MMA. What am I do? Watch him spar? Watch what? I've, I, I've, seen, I've seen his fights. I know his background. I know his Owen went as a pro boxer. I've seen him throw that ugly ass left hook and that slow ass right hand. What's, what else did I see? I've seen him. I've seen him get tired. I've seen him blowing up to like 2.30 before he fought Bob Lou. I've seen him fake low blows. What's there to see? I saw him, we were in the same locker room before you, in Utah, we both lost. And I've seen him crying, talking about how he gave up because the altitude got to him and he missed his kids. You know what? As a father, you know what I'm saying? I respect that he misses kids, but at the same time, the fact he said he gave up, I already had the fight won. I committed to this team, you know? I'm at John Wood's house. I called him and said, I want to be a part of this team. I'm here every day. I'm grinding. And, um, you know, Mo used to come over here on open sparring. And I, I hate that he's taking it personal. But the thing is, it's like, you know, John Wood told me, he goes, you know, hard work's going to surpass technique. And, you know, I'm on my way up and I don't stop and I'm gonna keep grinding. I'm gonna make it. And uh, I think he sees that, you know, and not just that, I commit to the team and, you know, I'm just friendly with everybody. And I think these people kind of took me in and love me, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I shake their hand, I don't act like I'm better than anybody. I try to be humble. And, uh, you know, I think that gets you a little further sometimes. Well, the thing is, if you're gonna talk, I feel like he's fake. Cause if you're gonna talk trash or try to call somebody out, or talk bad about somebody, when you see him, make eye contact. When I see him, he's looking away, acting like I don't exist because he knows what's up, you know what I'm saying? If I'm gonna talk about him, I can look him in the eye and say, say what I'm gonna say about him. I'm gonna look him in the eye, I can, I'm not, you know, I keep it real. If I say something about you, you're gonna know. I'm not gonna just whisper and go to Memphis and call people out and, ho and hope they don't get back to somebody, you know what I'm saying? I'm not like that, I keep it real. After it's all over with, you know, I'll shake his hand. And uh, I'm not going to take anything to heart. I hate that he takes everything personal and he's upset like he is. You know, but you know, that's his issues. It's not mine. Um, I'm not letting it all get into my head. All the crap that's been talking. You know, that's just intimidation. And, and where I'm from, that's what people thrive on. And that don't work. It don't work with me. Because, I mean, you got to do more than just bark. You got to be able to bite too. And uh, at the same time, you know, you know, I hate that he's making the comments that he is. I'm not gonna fire back. I'm gonna keep it classy because that's just not not something I do. I talk with my fists, and there's no reason, you know, to try to light a fire under somebody, you know. Especially when you know you, you go to the, the links to talk about somebody's family and how you're gonna send them home crying to them. You know, that's just uncalled for, you know. And uh, you know, I, I feel like it might be kind of ignorant in, on his part because you know why why light a fire with somebody that you know you're gonna have a hard fight with anyway. You know what I mean? So. You know, I just, I just hope he's ready because I am, you know, and, and uh, he didn't do anything but just fire everybody up over here to help me. Fired myself up and there's no sleep. It's all go. And uh, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready to see if he's ready to back that up. I lived in Colorado Springs for three and a half years. I trained there. I've been training in Colorado Springs since about 2003, going to do training camps up there. Altitudes affect, affect me at all. I've been to Wyoming. I've done Happy Jack. I've done Pikes Peak, the, cog, the incline, the cog trail. You know what I'm saying? I, that don't affect me. You know, um, it's going to affect him because he's thinking about it more than I am. I'm not worried about no altitude. You know, I've, I've, I've been to the Caucasus Mountains over in Russia, competed there. Altitude is nothing to me because I've already dealt with it before. Once you've dealt with it like 10 to 15 to 20 times, you, you know what to expect. 
Well, of course you've got to recognize every aspect because every aspect adds up. And sometimes that can, all the little tweaks and all the little technical things can make the difference. Um, I do feel like, I, you know, we are paying attention to that. We are working hard. I don't want to reveal my techniques, but we have been getting ready for the elevation. And not just that, I feel like I'm in the top, top shape of my life. And then just to be arrogant and say, oh, I'm going to brush it off, it might be a factor. And you might, you know, I might be kind of ignorant, but at the same time, you know, all I can worry about is me and I'm going to do my part. I'm going to be ready for whatever. Did not the fight when I fight Jacob? I feel like I match up. Um, Pretty. I'm, I feel like I'm a matchup good in every area. You know, I'm, I cannot wrestle if I want to. I cannot strike him if I want to. I cannot speed him. I quick him. I strength him. Cardio. Whatever I feel like, you know, I, I do. I'm gonna take what he gives me, and I'm gonna capitalize on all his mistakes. And I'm gonna win. Um, you know, it's like I said. You know, I think it's gonna be a fight where it's gonna come down to who suffered, who wants it more. I think we're gonna both beat the hell out of each other. I don't expect not to get taken down. I don't expect not to get punched in the face, but you know, I'll say this, with Mo taking me down and Mo punching me, I'm a tough ass white boy, that, that's not gonna stop me. It's not gonna end the fight, but I know I have the submission skills and the power to end it with one shot, one move. So, you know, I think that kind of plays in my favor. We'll see how it goes. You know, when we stand across the cage for each other come fight night, I have nothing to say. All the talk has been done by me training hard in the gym. Nothing to say. You know, saying there's nothing more to do except to fight and uh, get that victory, get my hand raised, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, you know, hope you're ready to fight. You know, I hope you're ready to fight. Don't think that you're just, you're just gonna walk away with this easy. It's gonna be a fight for you, bro. It's not gonna be easy. So if you think it's gonna be like that, you're just gonna run through me and you talk all your crap, you're wrong, and I'm gonna show you.